This is Mr. Smith, and here is part two of my stop motion tutorial. So I have taken all of my shots, I've deleted the bloopers where my hand was in them, and I have imported them into OpenShot already. Now you can do this with other programs. I have done this with other programs. OpenShot right now is my go-to, so that's where I am. Now before I bring these images into my timeline, I am going to go up to my preferences which in OpenShot is under edit for some programs is under file and where it has image length I have changed it to half a second you can actually go down to one tenth of a second and for most animations I recommend doing that OpenShot even though it's my favorite program for editing right now once you get past the half a second range, it is much more difficult to really zoom in and click on the clip properly, which is a downside, but whatever. Okay, so now that that's done, I am going to select all of my clips just by holding Control A, and I'm also getting my title in here. That's not a big problem. I'll mess with that later. And I'm going to right click on this and I am going to pick add to timeline. This is going to bring up an interface because OpenShot is aware I want to bring in a lot of images. So it is asking, hey, how do you want to do this? And when do I want them to start? I'm going to have them start right at the zero mark. That's fine. How long do I want each image to display? In this case, 0.5 is what I'm asking for. 0.1 is better. If you're doing a full true animation, which is standard to what we have historically seen, you're more likely going to see 12 frames per second or even 24 frames per second if you're getting really fancy. But for this, this is a little more low key. This is a little more amateur. So it'll be what it'll be. For fade, zoom, and transition, these are all turned off and we're going to leave them turned off. They actually cause more problems if we turn them on, especially if the transition length is literally four times as long as the image length. I really don't want to mess with that. You can change the order of the images in here. These are all chronologically numbered already, so I don't need to worry about that too much, except for this one here, which is at the bottom, but we'll mess with that later. Click OK, and now they're all added in. Now, there are some adjustments that I want to make, so I'm going to select my entire timeline. I'm going to pull this down into a lower track and we're going to start off by taking my title and dragging this up to the top track and a title for half a second no one's going to be able to read that so I am going to click and drag on the edge of this clip. Let's have that go for five seconds. That'll be fine and this particular title, I made it be transparent. So if I drag the first frame in, we see that in the background. I like that aesthetic a lot more. And I'm going to make this title go just as long, maybe a little bit shorter. It, it depends on your own personal aesthetics, how you're going to do that. And I'm going to click on my title, make sure that's the only one selected. And I'm going to add a fade at the end of the clip going to have that fade out. So the rest of these, for the most part, I can drag right in to my timeline, but there's a few that are going to be exceptions. For example, any time right before my wizard changes direction, I want them to pause for a moment. So like that clip right there, I want that one to be a little bit longer. Most of these, having them be half a second, is just fine. So I'm going to drag these over and this one here I'm going to attach and I'm going to make this go just a little bit longer. Make them pause and I'm going to do that again. Now for this part here my notes in my storyboard have them visibly trembling and moving back and forth every half second isn't really showing that kind of aesthetic going on. So to adjust this I'm going to take these clips and I'm going to move them up here because basically once I make them smaller I'm not going to be able to move them at all and I'm going to take each clip and when they're in place shrink them down to next to nothing and there are ways to automate this process but they tend to leave each of those clips 
where its start point was, and then you can't move them to where you want them to be afterwards. So it's really not worth it to automate it. Now the rest of these, I'm going to pretend I've adjusted the timing for those already. I'm gonna attach them right here. The end clip, which also happens to be blank, I can extend this out and throw my credits in there. We'll pretend I've done that already. Let's rewind to the beginning and hit play to test this out. And this is probably an animation where it'd be a really good idea to find some music or sound effects that would go well with it. And I can add them in in the other tracks. I'm not going to do that for this because this is just a tutorial and I've shown how to do that earlier. Let's go back and show that part again. Yet that looks a little bit more panicked than moving every half a second especially in contrast to the regular slow movement. And there goes Monty the Dragon going past, and our animation is finished. And that's the basics for animating something in OpenShot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.